Storms bring out the fear of God in the heathen. You, you, um, Deborah's not here today because she, had to, she, she was getting her, her roof fixed, and the only time they had a place open for her to get her roof for the next month, and it's leaking places, and it's, it's getting it done today. And she's like, I have to get it done. She's, I don't want to, I don't want to. She had to be there for that. But she said that the insurance adjuster came by and says, oh, well, it's covered. It's, it's an act of God. It's interesting that storms are considered act of God. Amen. But creation isn't. Right. <laughs> I kind of find that kind of funny. Look at chapter. Now look at Jonah chapter one verse four. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his god and cast forth the wares that were in the ship of the sea to lighten them. But Jonah was gone down to the side of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. The most sorriest person, the heart, the sorriest thing to see is a Christian not even aware of the storm they're causing in people's life. That's the saddest thing to see is a Christian not realizing the destruction they're leaving in people's life because they're disobedient. Right. That's pretty hard to think, right? Look at verse number six. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Well, what happened? What were they doing just the verse before? They were praying to all their gods. Mm -hmm. And their gods were unable to help them. By the way, there is no God like our God. Amen. Our God can hear and answer prayer. Our God can help us in the the time of trouble. Their gods are useless. And as they're praying, just like they're praying with Baal, and they're trying to get Baal to come from a long journey, and they're not answering prayers because their gods are dumb idols, have no ears, have no heart, and have no ability with them whatsoever, they realize their religion is futile. Their gods are worthless, and they say, there's one here who hasn't prayed. Let's invoke him to pray. And they say, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Call upon your God, because our gods gods aren't working our gods don't work. It's like a, it's like a starch-free, no-bread diet after 32 days. It's not working. Something's wrong. Give me a cupcake. Anyways, but, um, but it's the storms bring out the fear of God and the heathen, and they don't know what's going on. But who are the heathen? They're the unsaved people around us. And the storm that's happening in our life, it causes, when, when our storm affects them, it causes them to fear God. Look, God's going to get them to fear Him, whether by our example or by our, our example of a good life or our example of God judging our life. God's going to get the glory out of, out of our life. Mm-hmm. Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter number 5, they lied against the Holy Ghost. They lied and conspired against the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says God killed them. God smote them dead because they didn't tithe. I'm just kidding. Because they, they, did, because they didn't give, because they lied to the Lord and they said they gave all they didn't. Because of that, God smote them dead. Because I lied against the Holy Spirit. Look it, lying against the Holy Spirit, do you think that's the unpardonable sin? No, but for them it was the sin unto death. I believe there's a sin unto death that every believer is going to find out that is one day. I believe that when God judges us, it's, your life is no longer worth value on this earth, I'm going to take you home. That's pretty rough when you're a believer, you've got to face that. Now God wants us to have an abundant life, but if we refuse to live an abundant life, God will take us. God will take us. Storms bring up the fear of God and the heathen. They, now they suddenly want to call upon God. 9-11 took place. Churches were filled. Yeah. Something terrible happened. Hey, World War II hit. Something happened. Pearl Harbor. Oh, something terrible happened. That next Sunday, churches were filled. People are filled when something bad happens, but the rest of the time we forsake God. Yeah. That's what the world right. does. They forsake right. God. But isn't it something when, when, when things happen, they want... Hey, how many times have you been at work and someone's going through a hard time and they say, will you go to church, will you pray for me when you go to church? Yeah. Will you pray for me? Hey, you're a Christian, will you say a prayer for me? Hey, you're in the hospital, people want the clergy to come back to the room and pray for them. Now they're calling, and it's stupid because they don't let Bible-believing Christians, that are, that are you know, soul winners, being the clergy, by the way, so they don't like that, but they don't want the fear. They don't want the. They don't want the fear of. God. They, don't, they don't want anything to do with God until they're having a hard time. They want the God to come down with his magic genie wand and go. Oh, things are wonderful and better. God's not the cure all for your problems. You 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 know. We, if you reap to the you reap to the flesh, you can have sow corruption. That's what God says. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Amen. But storms bring up the fear of God and the heathen. Here they are. They're praying. They're crying out. They're saying, man, our religion is useless. Our religion is vain. Hey, you pray to your God. You pray to your God. 
if so be that, that if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. They weren't asking for that, hey, you pray into your God that we don't believe in. They started believing in God. They started believing and saying, hey, you pray to your God because our guards aren't working. Storms bring up the fear of God and the heathen. Why, don't, why doesn't the storms that we go through bring out the fear of God and dependence of God in our life? Why is it? Why does it take something traumatic for us to just trust Him? Here God has given us all the precious promises that are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. All the promises of God that are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Why don't we go to Him? Why is it we have to wait till something major happens? Why do we, why do we wait till the last minute? A preacher, and a, deacon, a preacher and the deacons were talking about one day and they said, our tenants is low, our offerings are low. We had to cut our missionaries. We're cutting our salaries. I don't know what's left to do. We're not making budget. I don't want to do. And, and, the, and the preacher says, I guess it's just time to pray. And the deacon says, has it come to that? <laughs> That's the first thing we have to do is go to God. He, like, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. You seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. If we ask him, like if we ask him in prayer, he'll give us. He's right. promised he'll meet our need. Right. But we don't go to prayer. Why don't we?